It's the new Red Green Show! And now, here's the man who wears his heart in the sleeve. Right next to his ketchup and gravy stains, your hero, my uncle, Red Green! Thank you very much. Thank you, appreciate it. Well, today I'm gonna do something I really enjoy. You going fishing, Uncle Red? <laughs> No, Harold, I'm going to Ross Perot's house for a fondue party. <laughs> of course I'm going fishing. Going fishing for lake trout. Tried to go last Sunday to so many fishermen out there had to jump up and down the boat just to get her to touch the water. <laughs> well, that's because the church is closed. Reverend Frank just closed up the church and left town. Why? Because if he ran out of sinners, he can just come to the lodge. No, 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 no. I guess he just went looking for a bigger church, you know. I guess he's paid on commission. <laughs> anyway, church is closed up and there's no more Sunday services. None at all. No church on Sunday? Oh. We gotta do something about that, Earl. Can't let that go. Well, what do you care? You never went to church anyway. Well, no, no. It's not for me. It's for the other people. They gotta be in church on Sunday with the fishers of men so I can be out in the lake with the fishers of trout. <laughs> What you're looking at now is a bunch of segments from this particular show. The main message being, for gosh sakes, don't even think about changing the channel. I'll tell you something, you want to make sense out of this program, you got to give it your undivided attention. Well, I thought we should place an ad for a new reverend, but the want ads don't seem to have a classification for religious leaders. Maybe under business personals. <laughs> Maybe under sales or, or delivery services. Why are you dressed like that here? Are the village people hiring roadies? <laughs> no, my Boy Scout troop is meeting here tonight. Boy Scouts coming to Possum Lodge? Was there a badge for that, like indoor survival or something, Harold? No, 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 normally we meet at the church, right? But ever since Reverend Frank took off after a bigger flock of followers, church is closed, so, you know, Possum Lodge is here, the Boy Scouts are there, I figured, you know. Wah. You can't be bringing Boy Scouts to the lodge just because the Reverend got the flock out of here, Harold. I don't think you want to get the Boy Scouts upset, Uncle Red. They have sharp little knives and they know a lot of knots. <laughs> well, we got to get a new river. We got to get that church back open. You know what? Maybe a school bus will come into town. One of those ones all painted up with the flower power and the peace signs and catch on fire and melt. How would that help? That's how we got Reverend Frank. <laughs> a little bit later in the show, Bill and Harold are going to pitch a tent, go camping, that kind of thing. So, oh, oh, say two heads are better than one. But not those heads, I would say. So uh, what they're going to do now, just this little bit of a preview here is what's going to happen later on. Harold, got the, I guess he got the tent pegs in there, and I was smart enough to stay away from this adventure. And what's Bill? What, oh, yeah, okay. Wow. Hitting out the big hammer there, and uh, Harold's, uh, what do you think, Harold? What do you think? Is this a good idea? You're going to hold it. Good idea? What do you think? You're going to hold the pegs? Good idea? Good idea? You're fine. Oh, you're fine. Come on, you're fine. Gosh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Part of the ritual, part of the tradition of being a man up at the lodge, you gotta hold the ten pegs for Bill. Watch out. Oh, you're fine. You're good. You're good. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, no, you're fine. You're good. More of that later. Oh, the grass is wet this morning. It glitters in the sun. It soaks my shoes. It makes me muse as to whence the moisture comes. I check through all the plumbing and for leaks in the watering can. But this H2O seems to flow from the hole in the rat of my van. <laughs> Okay, this is for the big one. For some of Buster Hadfield's famous chili and a new set of seat covers. Uncle Red, you have 30 seconds to get Mr. Dalton Humphreys of the Humphreys Everything Store to say this word. Teenager. <laughs> and go. All right, Dalton, uh, less than 20 years old. Good as new. Uh, I'm talking about a person who's less than 20 years old. Punk. <laughs> Younger than 20, older than 12. Shoplifter? <laughs> no, this, this is a general term, like, like your daughter, eh? She's a... Burden, terrible, terrible. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. She was an infant, then she became a toddler, then an adolescence, and now she's a... Demon, Satan, spawn, devil, worshiping... <laughs> okay, what? 
right. No, no, yes, yes, I know she acts that way, but that's because she became this. Fat. No. <laughs> we're, all, we're almost out of time, almost out of time. All right, I, I'm, Dalton, to you, this person gets away with murder. O.J. Simpson! O.J. Simpson! <laughs> This week on Handy Man Corner, we're going to do something to make a lot of you guys feel young and alive again, because it's dangerous. Now, I don't mean dangerous to build. All my projects are that way. I'm talking about dangerous to use. That's what gets the juices going. You know, the adrenaline, the testosterone, the hydrogen peroxide. <laughs> now, I'm sure that uh, most of you know what uh, these units are here, but I'll tell you, you know, with the invention of the space-age plastic and the no-wax floors and everything, these units have become kind of a thing of the past, so you can get them real cheap, like at a yard sale or even a dump, you know. Now, you're gonna need two of them. One for the left foot, one for the right foot. What are we gonna make? How about electric rollerblades? <laughs> you know those young people today and the dumb things they're doing? Well, I think we're one step ahead of them this time. <laughs> All right, first thing you gotta do is you gotta separate the head of the unit from the handle. And you uh, might use one of these uh, lubricating sprays and just very careful where you put it. There's a lot, sometimes there's a little hidden uh, nut or bolt in there and this will kind of dissolve the rest on them. Just loosen them up to where they'll just come apart just that much easier. There we go. All right, uh, remember a few winters ago when you said, boy, you know, I need a winter activity. Actually, it's probably your wife that said it, or your doctor. So you went out and you got yourself some uh, cross-country skis, eh? Tried it once, and it was fine, everything. Then you came to your senses and uh, bought a snowmobile. <laughs> well, here's the good news. You're actually going to be able to use those cross-country skis now, because what we want to do is we want to take the bindings off there and the boots off there and then attach them to our floor polishers. All right, now, uh, it's probably a, probably a Scandinavian bolt of some kind. It could be any kind of thread or... All right, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. <laughs> You don't have to feel bad about uh, about doing that to the skis, because if you kept up the skiing, you probably would have done this yourself and probably done the same thing to your leg. All right, now what you want to do is uh, tie that onto the top of the floor polisher using maybe a bolt in the washer or, hey, whatever you like. <laughs> there we go. Now, take a look at how this works. All right, see there? See the wheels on that? See? See how it goes? See? See? Oh. All right. So you notice on that that the uh, brushes go in opposite directions. So that means that once you got them on, you know, the, the steering and the direction, it's a little bit sensitive. You got to maybe, if you want to go backwards, I, I'd say lean forward. If you want to go forwards, you lean backwards. If you want to go left, you lean right. If you want to go right, you lean left, stand up, sit down, fight, fight, fight. If you want to stop altogether, uh, you would lean all the way forward into what I believe they call a face plant. <laughs> all right. We're all set. Let's go rollerblading. <laughs> all right, now, uh, obviously, you need a portable source of electricity, so uh, gotten a hold of a bunch of 9-volt batteries. There isn't a Walkman working within 50 miles of the lodge right now. And when you wire these up, this is very important, make sure you have the same amount of electricity going to each foot. <laughs> All right, now I'm ready to go uh, rollerblading electrically. So remember, the women don't find you handsome. They should at least find you handy. <laughs> All right, there's a bit of technique involved. Guess I need a little more polish. <laughs> Stay tuned and relax. Whatever this is, we got lots more of it. Uh, yeah, I want to talk to you older guys about uh, diet and exercising. Because if you're anything like me, you plan to start exercising first thing tomorrow morning or <laughs> next week or uh, possibly the week after that, but certainly by the end of the summer. <laughs> of course, it's all talk and no action. And why is that? Because you got no motivation. I was looking at a thing in the paper here. Some doctor has done a study on guys who've had heart attacks. And you get this, usually when a guy has his first heart attack, you know what he does? 
he jumps up and he starts exercise. <laughs> That's what they do. They get up there and they get going. There's no talk at all. It's all action. And why? Of course, he's motivated at that point. So don't you guys be beating yourself up because you eat too much of the wrong stuff or you smoke or you drink or whatever. Once the old ticker gives you the, you know, or they find a lump where there isn't supposed to be one, or the doctor holds up your x-ray and goes, uh-oh. Well, then, by golly, you'll have all the motivation you need. Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. Well, I've already received a couple of applications for a new reverend here for the Possum Lake area. This one's even got a picture in it. Hi, I'm a sun worshiper. I believe that God wants us all to be naked. <laughs> Not you, he doesn't, sir. <laughs> oh, sorry, ma'am. <laughs> What's this one say? Pope Larry... <laughs> priest of the Incas. No, it's me, Harold. Oh. Yeah. No, we're having our Morris Dance Group meeting here tonight. Oh, no, you're not, Harold. <laughs> oh, yes, we are. Not dressed like that, you're not. There are laws, okay? Yes, there are yeah, laws. there are laws. Yes, there are laws. And there's a municipal bylaw, the one that uh, granted you the lease to this land. It stipulates you have to create space for the community. Since when? It's in the charter. Well, nobody's ever come here before. <laughs> no kidding. <laughs> If you had a choice between the church and here, where would you go? Even the Satanists prefer the church. Well, who else has dibs on this place, Harold? Well, anyone else who ever used the church, like the Floor Hockey League, the Bingo. Man, I gotta find a reverend The, fast, the AA group is gonna be here. The Him and Howl group is gonna be here. All sorts of things. So we're gonna have the... Woo! What the heck is this? Man, that's loud. Irish dancers are going to be here. Yeah. We got, we've got also the, uh, you're going to be the, uh, uh, the wine and cheese club. <laughs> Did I mention the model airplane club? No, you didn't, Harold. <laughs> and tonight we're going to hear from Mr. Buzz Sherwood. Buzz? Uh, uh, hey, my name's Buzz. Hi, Hi Buzz. Buzz. And, uh, well, I went, I went two weeks without acting like a guy. Oh, all right. <laughs> but it, it's hard, eh, because, you know, it, it's, you know, seat up before, put the seat down when you're done. <laughs> but, uh, last Sunday I had a setback, okay? Um, I was in the backyard. I was putting this new gas barbecue together. And everything was just going great, but then I couldn't figure out how to attach the burner to the main unit, right? And, and I just started acting like a guy. I said, well, there must be parts missing. <laughs> and, then, and then I went in and I got more tools. And then, and then I got the duct tape and I thought, I'll just jerry-rig this and make it work. And then I thought, well, I'll just throw it in the garbage and I'll just make one with my own bare hands. <laughs> and then the woman that loves me, she said, she saved me with three little words. Read the instructions. <laughs> the instructions, man, you know, like these were like, these are like the extra cards you get in a new deck, right? You throw them out. <laughs> or, it's, or it's like the little piece of paper you get in a new pair of jeans, right? And it says, inspected by number 47. <laughs> what was I talking about? The instructions. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> So I read them, right? And, and I was doing it wrong. And then I realized this piece of paper is 
made me realize I was a failure. And then I thought, no, man, you're not a failure. No way, you, you would have figured it out eventually, right? You, you didn't need to read the stupid instructions. You know, you would have you got it. And then I thought, well, then, reading the instructions, you're not asking for help. You're cheating. <laughs> so I'm not a loser, man. I'm a cheater. <laughs> and I felt a lot better. <laughs> Meanwhile, back at the tent pegs, we're gonna finish up the adventures with Bill now, and they're still working on the <laughs> working on the windows around the lodge. And uh, this is one of these new kind of tents they're gonna put up, Bill and Harold here. It's one of got the kind of the progress isn't always a good thing there. Anyway, uh, it's one of the I don't know what they call them, umbrella tent or something like that. They where the frames all on the outside, and it's got a lot of spring to it, a lot of spring there. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Oh. <laughs> night fell. Anyway, in they go, and you know, this is one of the great things I think about uh, camping. You don't want to get too big a tent because part of the experience is the is the bonding feeling that you get just by being in a confined. You know, sometimes you don't need. You know, what you find is there are certain things that you take that you really don't need. Uh, but the, you know, the point being that when you get into one of them smaller tents, there uh, just maybe a one-man tent, and you get two men in there, and. Again, you don't need you don't need as many things as you maybe you might think that you do. You find you get oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. you find that you get into kind of a thing where you know you get to talk about things and just uh, oh my gosh, what the heck? What do you got in there, boys? Oh 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 oh, it's a boy. <laughs> All right, and then they can just lay back there and see that that's kind of and they can talk about things and just just have that camaraderie that goes hand in hand with camping, camping and. Now this, okay, all right, now this, all right, now this, okay, we have, a, okay, all right, Harold, there's a problem there, you have a, what you have is what we like to call a snorer, you know, also known as a fist magnet, and in this case, Harold's going to try and take a little more peaceful, shine a light in his eyes, and why, oh, why, Bill, one thing about Bill, you know, when he's asleep, he is asleep, and when he's awake, he's really too much awake, too. What he's going to do now, Harold realizes one of the things they've thrown out is the snorkel and mask set. So he just grabs the mask, putting that sometimes apparently if you interrupt, interrupt the breathing. Oh, what's that there? That would be uh, some sort of a Massasauga rattler or something there. And anyway, if you interrupt the breathing pattern, apparently you can. There we go. See, just like that. There you go. See, now there, 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 there's a problem. problem. What? Oh, oh, well, no. Okay. All right. All right. Not perfect. Not perfect. And then Harold, uh, Harold realizes that he's got the snorkel. Put the snorkel in the mouth there, but uh, he doesn't grab the snorkel. You know, he grabs the assistant snorkel. In this case, a snake. Harold, that's a snake. Harold, Harold, it's a snake. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah. See you later, Harold. And the lamb shall lie down with the lion, and the bill shall lie down with the rattler. <laughs> Here's a love letter to Harold from a lady viewer. Nice stationery. show where we explore the three little words that men find so difficult to say. I don't know. So true. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty, joining me, Uncle Red, in the expert portion of the show is a brand new person in the Possum Lake area, building a cottage up here. Ladies and gentlemen, successful businessman, Mr. Kevin Black. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome. Alrighty. Yeah. I chose this letter especially for you, Mr. Black. Um, dear experts, uh, I am a corporate executive in a large metropolitan area, and I'm thinking about buying a cottage up around Possum Lake. How could I go about making a purchase? Yeah. Hang on one second, guys. Yeah, I think we should probably just take that right to bed, see how it creases the sheets. Okay, babe? <laughs> All right. <laughs> guys, right up front. <clears throat> What I'd like to say is that I think uh, a summer property is just a fantastic idea. I love this area. I figure I'll get used to the people. As a matter of fact, I recently purchased a thousand acres of waterfront. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Kevin here about Blood Point. Well, actually, it's called uh, a Bluff Point on the real estate survey map. Yeah, well, the guy who did the map never lived there. <laughs> How are the mosquitoes, Kevin? Oh, they're fine. Yeah. They're fine. And I'm, uh, I'm told, of course, they're not always this bad. No, no. They're a lot worse in the spring. <laughs> Don't you listen to him, Mr. Black. It's a beautiful spot you've got out there. Nice cottage you're building and everything. Is that a swimming pool you're putting in? Oh, no, Harold. No, no, it's not. No, it's a tennis court. 
and I'm building it right in a stand of cedar trees. Oh, that's a great idea. You know what uh, you might want to do with that, Kevin? Uh, just a suggestion, of course, is put up a real fine mesh on the fence on that unit, or maybe a sign saying, no mosquitoes. <laughs> that wouldn't work, would it? What I think Mr. Black is saying to this viewer is, by all means, come on up to Pawson Lake and buy up the property. There's some bargain prices here for you. Right, but let me give you a suggestion. Don't buy vacant property, okay? The community's been here 150 years. If there's land up here that hasn't been built on by now, there's usually a pretty good reason for that. <laughs> Here's what you want to do. Find the oldest building in the area, something that's been around here since day one, because they had every location to choose from in those days. That's going to be the place on the best spot. Put an offer in on that one. Hey, surprisingly, that's pretty darn good information, Uncle Red. <laughs> yes, and you know what? I'd be interested in pursuing this. I have a, a number of investors. We could put together some kind of limited partnership. Now, what did you say was the oldest building around here? Well, the lodge. <laughs> well, good news. Just got off the phone with Reverend Frank. I figured he had a problem because he called collect, you know. <laughs> Turns out he couldn't get another job, you know, because the churches, they're all cutting back with the financial things and everything. I guess they figure it's uh, cheaper to let everybody go to hell. You know? <laughs> so Reverend Frank is coming back and the church is open for business. and bad reviews were, we're down in the basement, you know, the meeting yeah. room, we're rehearsing our Andrew Lloyd Webb version of Cass, you know. Yeah. Ah, ah. <laughs> Bunch of the lodge members thought it'd be funny, you know, all let their dogs down in there. <laughs> they went wild. <laughs> Wait, dogs do wild. I know what you're saying there, yeah. We can't do cats anymore. We're going to have to do Les Miserables. Well, everything you actors do is pretty miserable, if you ask me. Oh, 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 Maybe change your clothes and get down there. I'll be down in a minute. All right, where you go? You want to clean up your kitty litter here, Harold? <laughs> if my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting. And in keeping with this religious theme, if you're in the mood to uh, guide a lost soul to a heavenly body, I'm your man. <laughs> Rest of you, thanks for watching. We have Harold and myself and the whole gang up here, including Rum Dum Tigger. who stole all the duct tape from my bedroom please raise their hand. All right, then maybe the person who taped me to the bed would raise their hand.